Hey everybody, I'm Andy. Welcome back to Chronic Woodwork. Today is video two in a series of videos on how to build a cedar strip canoe. Today, we're building the mold stations. Uh, these forms are gonna be cut from half inch MDF. Uh, I'm gonna double some of them up as you'll see, but essentially at the end, these molds are all gonna be set up on top of the strong back, which we built last time. And then the cedar strips are gonna conform to these molds to give us the shape of our canoe. Once again, it's early on in the process, so it's important to maintain accuracy. Without further ado, here we go. For this phase of the project, I began by taking my plans, which I purchased from Bear Mountain Boats, and just cutting them out. I used some carbon paper to trace each mold station onto some really thick stock poster board that I purchased at Walmart. Uh, it's just a couple extra bucks, but it allows me to have an extra set of plans just in case I make some monster mistake and ruin the whole set. I used the straight edge ruler to mark all the straight lines on the mold stations and then just very, very carefully freehanded the curves. I removed the template, uh, got a new poster board, and then I just repeated the process from mold zero all the way down to mold six, including the stems. I took the full size poster boards down to my basement and used the straight edge and a box cutter to cut the straight edges on each mold. And I just used some basic scissors to cut the curves, but making sure if I missed, I missed just outside the line. Once the molds were completely cut out, I marked the center line of my half inch plywood. And this is when I realized I had a huge mistake. The DVDs with Nick Offerman warn you about this process, but I cut the plywood too short. Needless to say, I was pretty frustrated, but at this point in the process, you just have to get new material and start over. So I was back to square one. I went and bought some MDF, marked the middle, and then I was able to trace my mold onto each station. While I was tracing the molds onto the new MDF sheets, Dixie came down and needed some love. So I took a break and gave her some of her much needed attention. But then it was back to business. Just mark the center line, trace one half of your mold, flip it over and repeat the process. One thing I should note is that for stations one through six and the stem, I doubled up the sheets of MDF and screwed them together. This is gonna allow me to cut them out all at once and make sure that station one on either end of the canoe is perfectly matching. If at all possible, when you're tracing your mold stations onto the MDF, maintain that factory edge and make sure that's gonna serve as the base of your mold station. Just gonna provide a little bit more regularity in your mold. Once again, make sure you clearly mark all your mold stations as you're attaching them to the strong back. It's just gonna make everything that much more clear and avoid mistakes. For cutting out the molds, I started cutting on my bandsaw. My bandsaw is old, uh, but it gets the job done. I had trouble cutting some of the more tight curves on my bandsaw, and I ultimately ended up breaking one of my blades. At that point, I took a note out of the book from Adam from A Guy Doing Stuff and just converted to my jigsaw. Once again, err on the side of caution and cut just outside the line. We're gonna end up sanding all of these molds down. So if you miss just outside the line, you can sand down to the line. Cutting out the molds is relatively straightforward, but for the stem molds, you're gonna wanna cut them out as usual, find the biggest Forstner bit you have and cut several holes along the edge. This is gonna allow you to clamp onto it later. It's gonna cause a huge mess. So just wait till the end till it's all done. Once I had all my mold stations cut out and the holes cut in my stem molds, I grabbed my sander and gave all the edges a once over. This will ensure that the two molds are perfectly matching. Uh, uh, just in case the jigsaw got out of line or the bandsaw got out of line, this should fix that problem. And finally, I brought all the mold stations back inside and unscrewed them to reveal that there were in fact two mold stations uh, for each cut that I made. Now, as tempting as it's gonna be to just slap these onto your strong back that we made last time, you need to refrain. There's one step we need to do before we attach these mold stations, and that's steam bending the stems. That's my next video, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.